Good morning, Richard here, and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to be talking all about my two 1D cameras, the 1D Mark III, which is 14 years old, I think, and the 1D X Mark II, which I've only purchased in the last year or so. Um, and a quick disclaimer before we get into this, I do have, <laughs> um, I'm rubbish at remembering things, and um, just to make sure I don't forget anything, I do have some notes that I keep glancing at below the camera, so if you think I'm being rude, I'm not, but... I have to remember it somehow, so let's roll that intro and then we'll get into it. A couple of videos ago, I talked about how old pro level cameras were still doing the job. Now, how you could get amazing deals from still stunning cameras with specs that are still more than adequate in today's ever increasing camera laden market. So in the interest of fairness, I now just want to explain just how amazing today's technology is. Um, this is my Canon 1D Mark III, not a 1DX Mark III, it's an old fashioned 1D. Now that was released in, I think, May 2007, I got mine in 2009, so it was a couple of years old when I got it, and it's now almost 14 years old. I've got to admit, I am in awe of this camera, and up until February this year, I used it regularly to shoot anything from rugby, sports, school sports, it's done hours in the rain, it's done hours in the baking sun, and every time I grabbed it out of the camera case, it would perform for me, day in, day out. That was until I got the 5D Mark III. Um, now that's the 1D Mark III is still a amazing camera, and with a few camera tweaks, it is still producing fantastic images. Outdoors. Indoors or in low light, it sucks. But we'll get onto that in a minute. Um, let me just put that down. Now, whenever I want to check out a camera or compare it to another one, I head over to a website called cameradecision.com. You can pop in a couple of camera makes. And it gives you the info of each camera and the comparisons of the main points. As you can see. It also rates them and pitches them against each other for all their main points and it also suggests why you should pick camera A over camera B or camera B over camera A. Um, and amazingly on this occasion it gives you four I think reasons as to why you should choose a 13 year old camera over a four year old camera which I'm filming on. Um, battery life. The old 1D Mark III is nothing short of amazing. It says you can get over 2,000 shots on a single charge which is less than a thousand on the one the x mark ii so twice as many weight it's a little bit lighter as you can see um, the sensor pixel area is larger on the old um, on the old camera and time lapse recording which i think is wrong i'm pretty sure that the one d mark iii doesn't have a time lapse function unless you're using a intervalometer with it or something like that um, but you can please correct me down below if i've got that wrong now it bothers me a bit that the website have made that mistake but it's the only one I've seen, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt for now. Um, and in terms of what they look like, they are remarkably similar to each other. The top view is almost identical. The back is super similar, other than a couple of extra buttons, as you can see on these two images here. But the list where the 1DX Mark II excels over the older 1D Mark III is never ending, as you'd expect. The old camera was priced at a little over 3K, I think, when it came in, and the newer one is 5K, so it's a huge difference. But 10 years has passed, and technology is, as you'd expect, a lot better now. There are a couple of areas, though, that really do stand out for me that I'm so happy with, and that is the fact that the new 1DX Mark II is a full frame, whereas the old 1D Mark III was a 1.3 crop sensor. The video on the 1DX does excellent video, 4K, HD, slow motion. I'm filming this on the 1DX now, and here is the, an example of the 1D Mark III video quality. Exactly, the 1D Mark III doesn't do video. Um, ISO, now being able to shoot at ISO 3211 years ago was groundbreaking for me anyway. But a couple of years later, when the 5D Mark III came out, well, the 1D was a little bit embarrassing in this area and it didn't cut it anymore. Um, here are a couple of shots from both the 1D cameras, the 1D Mark III and the 1DX Mark II, and you can see how much better the ISO is now. This is the same lens, same lighting, same shutter, same aperture, same white balance. The only thing that's changed is the ISO, but they're still the same on both cameras. 
Um, so yeah, much of an improvement there as you'd expect. The focal point says more on the 1DX Mark II, 61 I think against Fel 45. Now the screen resolution on the old 1D Mark III is rubbish. When shooting with it, I knew that if it looked even just a little bit decent on the on the LCD on the back, um, then in real life it is going to look it's it's going to look amazing. Um, the screen, as you'd expect, on the back of the 1DX Mark II is astonishing. I think it has something like 600% higher screen resolution, which is a massive jump forward. Um, Excuse me, frames per second, we now got 14 frames a second as opposed to 10, both of them are pretty good. Touch screen, better shutter life expectancy, better dynamic range, GPS face detection, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. Um, and we're privileged to be in a world where we can enjoy this kind of technology now. I think that the expectancy of, of what we as photographers should be able to produce has increased massively because of this. And Mobile phones are now producing amazing photos. They can't replace the photographer, the artistry, the vision that that person has. And as it stands, they can't quite produce the photos in certain conditions. But seeing how that technology has changed over the last five or 10 years, who's gonna know what the next five or 10 years will gonna bring us? But anyway, as for my trusty 14 year old 1D Mark III, well, it's the first camera I use as a pro. It means a lot to me, it's paid all my bills for most of the last 11 years. I don't think I can ever bring myself to get rid of it. And I think for years to come, this will always be sitting on a shelf somewhere, maybe on the shelf here, tucked away in a cupboard, just for old time's sake. I may even use it again for old time's sake, who knows? Probably not. Um, but I guess my message today is this. We are, um, we're all living in a world where technology seems to be advancing at such a rate and it's hard and expensive to keep up with it. There's been a massive jump this last year, this last year in particular, or maybe it's just because I've been keeping up with it due lockdown and reading more and, and looking into it more, I don't know. Um, but it's nice to have the newest and shiniest things as they're released, but it's out of reach for most people. Until you can get the new one, just use what you've got, perfect your art and enjoy yourself as you're doing it. And that's all I wanted to say today. So I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you for watching. Leave me a comment down below if you want to add anything. And the only thing left for you to do is to hit that like button and subscribe if you're not already. And the only thing left for me to do is to say thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.